The OSI is a model that standardizes the communication in computer systems. It is what the internet runs on, it is what your phone uses, your LAN, your router, everything that communicate with each other in computer system uses this model in one way or another. In this video, we will try to learn basics of the OSI model. By example, by the way, it stands for Open Systems Interconnection Model. I don't expect you to remember that. It's a very complex name, but that's what it matters. It is open, okay? And uh, with that said, let's just jump into the video. If you're new here, my name is Hussein, and we discuss all kinds of software engineering by example in this channel. And in this video, we will learn about the OSI model. This, this model, all right? always confused me i gotta be honest right when i was in the university 10 years ago more than that oh my god it's been 20 years ago since i went to the university okay i'm old officially right but i never understood this right because it was it was always explained to, in, in in a matter that from the network engineer point of view which is a very low level dealing with bytes and the details of that stuff and it always confused me as a software engineer as a as, as someone who as a programmer as, as someone dealing with application level all right so i tried to demystify this hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this video and uh, with that said let's just jump into this video all right so here's what i'm gonna do here guys I want to explain this in a matter of uh, at a high level where uh, we have uh, we have a bunch of network connection here. We have a beautiful router. We have a bunch of machines connected to this router. Could be Ethernet. Could be Wi-Fi. This is my attempt to do a lame Wi-Fi connection. You can see my phone is connected to this Wi-Fi, right? But uh, all of these machines have IP addresses, as you can see, internal IP addresses. Uh, I'm gonna reference a video that we talk about. We talk about private versus public uh, IP addresses there. So take a look at that. But every machine in this network have an IP address and have this letter assigned to them, and. Uh, this is supposed to be a MAC address, which is the media access control, which is kind of a unique 48 bit that identifies your network card. Okay, it's like a, it identifies your machine essentially. Okay, it's a lower level identifier for you. Okay, so we have machine A, B, C, D, F, and the IP address is 10.0.0.3 and, uh, and so on, right? So here's, here's our configuration right now, All right? And here's what I want to do. I have a web application running on server 3, 10.0.0.3, this guy right here, okay? And my phone want to consume the index.html page that is on, on this application, okay? I want to go through what really happens through this network, what exactly happened through, from the HTTP protocol, which is the web server is running on to, obviously. It's running on port 80, but it doesn't have to. It can be running on any port, really. Web server, we control that. Okay, and this is the communication that, that should, quote unquote, should happen, right? So I'm here in 10.5, going through this guy, and then uh, we'll go through and switches over to, to this application consumes that and gives back some results. So this is what I want to do. So let's see what really happens. So as a client, which is my mobile phone in this case, what I do is I will go to to the browser and type HTTP slash slash uh, 10.0.0.3 port 80 and then I will hit enter which translate if you know guys into a get request an http beautiful get request onto the slash which is the root and it sends a bunch of stuff okay it just compiles a bunch of requests and that request has headers it might have cookies it might have content type headers it doesn't have a body because it's a get request but it, it has a bunch of this, think of it as like a bunch of string, right? It's like a, a huge string of all this stuff, numbers and, right? So get slash 10.0.0.3 on port 80, HTTP headers and cookies and, and God knows what. Well, there's a lot of requests, right? Going on. There's a lot of big header. Okay. And so this is what this application, the browser in this case does. The HTTP protocol does prepare all that big string and then says, Yay! 
send it over god knows where okay and this is the job of one layer the first layer which is called the layer seven which is called the application layer and the application layer prepares all that stuff also receives some of that stuff and do does stuff with it okay so here's what it does it just like the application hey my job is done i prepared all that stuff what do i do Think of this as a bunch of bytes, which is strings, right? Which will be converted to numbers, which is converted into bits, ones and zeros, right? Okay, so there is another layer that sits below it, kind of optional. If you use HTTPS, right, or TLS, what it takes this huge string, right, that we saw and encrypt it if necessary. In our case, not really, because we, we're using just HTTP right there's no presentation per se there's no encryption so we just pass it over we just pass right through this layer if necessary it will it will just encrypt it right it just does an encryption so we have the same string now it's scrambled nobody knows what it is now okay by all, all bets are off we have a bunch of bits that doesn't reflect the original request right so layer six Presentation encrypt if necessary. So that's why I turned it pink. It's just the same data, but I turned it pink. It just means it's just encrypted. I don't know why I chose this color. Okay, here's the cool thing about this now. The next layer, since we're using HTTP, it's kind of a connection based uh, architecture, right? So that means each data that gets said has to be tagged, kind of tagged with a session. That means Hey, by the way, if you see this data with this session ID, which I use just a triangle here to identify it, that means it's my session IDs. Think of it as like a number, like session ID number seven, okay? And this session ID will go ahead and then be tagged in the data, which is encrypted, by the way. So the session layer cannot read this data, if you think about it. It's just a bunch of bytes, and I'm tagging something with it that indicates that this data is now tagged with this session so we can if, if there's like a go um, a lot of communication coming through right i know this data belongs to this session so this is a very stateful thing okay it's tagged now what we're gonna pass it to a very interesting layer and this layer is called the transport layer so this thing is too huge right so we have a bunch of bytes bits encrypted obviously this layer doesn't know what encryption means it just sees a bunch of bits that's his job and and also with this triangle which is just an additional bits if you think about it and then what it does is like you know this this thing is too big sir this thing is too big and i want to break it down into smaller manageable segments that's what it does all right and each segment it could be two. In this case, I have just broken into two for simplicity, but it could be like 30. All right. Who knows? Okay. And these segments, each segment is tagged with a lot of information, but for simplicity, it's tagged with the port number. And this is what interests interest us as engineers, right? Because we know port numbers. We send them all over. Every, every time we make a communication, we deal with port numbers. We don't particularly deal with this guy, but we know this guy, right? This is the target. Is We're sending it to port 80. That's why it knows. So this layer attaches the port into each segment, the destination port, and also the source port, which is something kind, kind of auto-generated, right, by this, uh, by this application. And... You don't really, as as programmers, we don't really deal with source because it says when you send something, you don't really care if it's coming back. It has to come back to you. You don't really care what port it should come back to you, just as long as it comes back, right? So and then and also this is also sequence. So now if these segments arrive out of order, this job, this application will will manage to sort them into the right order because now we're we're breaking stuff, guys. We're breaking a huge set of data. I better be sequenced and grouped into the original uh, way we broke it into, right? So here's what we did. Okay. So now two segments, right? And these are the thing we take the same segment and we pass it into down what we call the network layer this guy take this blind data which we have now the network layer doesn't know the port doesn't know that there is a port it just knows that there is a segment what we call segment a bunch of data and then attaches two pieces of information even more than that 
the destination IP address and the source IP address. So, and this is called a packet now. Again, this is not necessarily a segment is one to one with a packet. It could be a segment has three, three packets or four packets or seven packets. All right, but for simplicity, I just, I, I don't, I just didn't have space to do it here. Okay, I'm bad at PowerPoints, guys. So, uh, I, I'm. You're glad seeing animation. I, I, it took me 12 minutes to figure out how to animate this thing. Okay, so and uh, I'm using I'm not using PowerPoint by the way. I'm using Google Slides. But sure, okay. So we took this piece of data, shoved it in here, attached attached the destination IP, attached the source IP, and and so on. Right. So now. This layer, what it does is, is just blindly sends this packet. It doesn't check for errors. It, it's, it says, you know what? Hey, if you want to check your error, you better check it yourself. I don't, I, my job is just to transfer stuff into this IP. Once I manage to transfer it into this, into a machine that has its IP address, my job is done. Okay, that's what its job. Okay, it takes this whole thing and just shove it and then adds this information. And you can see this. Russian doll yeah, effect, right? Just like adding stuff on top of each data, okay? And here's the most interesting part. Interesting part. Each packet, which is this whole thing, is just passed down to the second layer, which is one of the most interesting layers here, which is kind of touch, touches the physical medium here. So what, what this layer does is, is it takes these packets and breaks them down. So it's like, you know what? I have packets. You want me to deliver these packets, right? I, I don't care how they are laid. I'm just going to break it down. It could, could be break it down middle of here, middle of here. It doesn't have to be sick, uh, correct, you know, just like by the line uh breaking right it's just like it, it, it is actually breaking here this part is the ip and this part of the port it doesn't really know it's just a bunch of bits and it's breaking down and then adding very interesting pieces of headers here it adds the target mac address for each of these smaller bits of packets that is called frames so we have packets segments we have packets we have frames, and these frames are the smallest bits, and they have like kind of small, very basic error detection, all right? And each frames, the job of this data link is just breaking into frames, and the, each frame is tagged by, hey, you want me to deliver this to this machine, and it's coming from this machine, okay? That's its job, that's it. It's just a bunch of frames, that is small grain frame. And if you look at this level, this frame means nothing. It doesn't mean anything because if you looked at it, you don't understand anything. You have to kind of have the big picture. You have to assemble the whole thing, right, together. And then we have C and D. D is basically us. And C is, if you remember, guys, the target machine that we're, the web server. As it was uh, 10.0.0.3 and then the machine is the... Now I, I want to mention here something very interesting. Sometimes you don't really know what is the MAC address, right, of this machine. You only need the IP address. And here's what ARP comes into uh, effect, where it's like an address resolution protocol, I think, which takes the IP address and res reverse engineer it into the MAC address. And there's the RP cache, so the machine, the, my phone some knows that... Uh, IP3 is actually machine C, all right, uh, with the MAC address C. So if it knows, it sends it. If it doesn't know, it first asks that question to know what is MAC address of IP3, okay? It's just This is just a note for you guys, okay? So I have a bunch of bets. I have a bunch of frames. What do I do now? Back to the real world, man. This is where it gets... This is where human made the revolution of networking, okay? What the the whole baloney that you see, guys, here were made possible because someone managed to send, not send. That's not the correct one. Someone managed to sneak in bits, ones and zeros, into electric signals and recently light signals and Wi-Fi signals, radio signals. Okay. They managed to sneak in ones and zeros. That is all it took. 
once we manage to to sneak in while I'm sending, like I have electricity, and I managed to sneak in ones and zeros, this enabled whatever you see here, guys. Okay, and we are leveraging this now. So we're taking all these frames, and which is nothing but ones and zeros, guys, and then just shoving them into the wire. One zero zero one zero zero whatever this but this is a huge sequence of bits. Okay, now you have guys a lot of questions. So we managed to convert this whole thing into a bunch of one zero zero one zero zero one zero zero. Okay, now what? How do I send this part? So this is the job of the physical layer, which here's what here is the cool part, guys. Here is what really cool. This machine, this miss this phone. What it does is sends a bunch of ones and zeros, which was very well crafted ones and zeros, guys, if you think about it. And guess what? It doesn't know where to send it. That's the tricky part. It does it has no idea where to send it. Electricity doesn't have a direction, guys. Light doesn't have direction. It just goes every way. And that's what happens here. This bunch of bits is going to do is, is going to go to server two. It's going to go to server three. It's going to go through my animation is broken. The router versus A. And it's going to go through four. And it's even going to go to itself. I think I'm not sure about that. So it's just, this is what happens. So it's like uh now it's like, oh now what? Everybody's getting my data? What are you talking about? Of course, every single computer is getting all the data at all time. But the beauty of this is this layered. Now, I have these layers, but guess what? Now that this is the physical layer did a job. Hey, sir, I did my job. I just transferred these sequence of bits. It's your job, whatever who is above me, to kind of make sense of whatever this thing. Okay, so the data layer says, huh, I, it starts just sniffing one bit after the other, and, and it knows kind of the first bit, if, if, it's a, if it's the first frame or not, it knows by the number of sequence of bit. I think if it's like a bunch of ones or a bunch of zeros, it knows, ooh, there's a frame coming. And it's just like, ooh, okay, let me start sniffing, and start sniffing num fixed number of size. I think the frames are fixed size. And it's just, okay, hey, I got a frame. I think this is a frame. This is one frame of the three. Remember, guys? And it says, this guy, he just got a frame. And he says, oh, wait a second. I know how a frame looks like because I'm in the data link layer. I'm layer two. I, this frame, this guy, um, I'm not supposed to receive this. I'm sorry. Okay. How about this guy? He does the same thing. Oh, oh, I'm A. This guy is uh, this this frame is intended to uh, see. And remember, guys, this is happening all the time, all the time. Okay, and uh, okay, and also okay. So everyone will receive these frames and uh, frame by frame. But guess what? These guys will drop these frames. We'll just ignore it. And that's the job of the media network layer, if you think, right? The, not the network layer, the network card. Okay. The network card in your uh, PC or the phone does that job for you. It receives constant garbage and it's, and it's discarding constant garbage all the time. Okay, but it happens so fast. Okay, so this is getting received all the time. So if you wrote an application that kind of bypassed that, you can actually sniff more data if you want. But that's why people tell you, hey, don't. Connect to Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, because people can sniff your data. Because that's why everybody in the Wi-Fi public network gets your data, gets your frames. If it's not encrypted, tough luck, right? If it's not encrypted, tough luck. Because I'm just going to go through these layers. I'm going to write an app that, guess what? Don't discard my the frames. It's, uh, it's for me. Give me all the frames. That's why, what, what Wireshark does. Give me all the frames you receive. And if it's encrypted, if it's not encrypted, tough luck, man. It's gonna, you're going to receive this like, and then people can read your stuff. If it's encrypted, eh, you can, you can kind of get away with it, right? If you think about it. Unless someone doesn't manage it. Man, man, but that's not a joke. Okay, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's continue.
All right, I just removed a bunch of computers here so we can have space to do what happened. Okay, so data link received all the frames. They are, they are, uh, they are, seems to be in sequence. And we have all that stuff. And what it does is, is okay, I, I know these frames. I'm going to remove these headers because the data layers and it says, yeah, okay, this, this is, that's, that's my, that's my fault. I added those stuff. So I'm going to send back to you a cleansed version of what I think I received. So it says, okay, this is the first frame, the second frame, and I think they are in order. Just take, take them, uh, take these frames and then do something with them. Okay. And the network layer says, okay, I guess uh, I received some data. I know how to deal with this thing. There is a header, 10.0.0.3. Oh, look at that. That is me. You can proceed, sir. It is for me. You can proceed. If it's if uh, if it somehow managed to reach here, but it's not for you, the router can do. If that means usually it's distant for the router, usually, right? So that uh, we're not gonna discuss that, but guys, sometimes you can. A packet can be intended for you as a device, but it's not intended for you as an application. Okay. So moving forward, I'm gonna remove my uh, headers and then pass it up to the to the transmission layer, the transport layer, and it says, "Okay, hey, I know this thing. These are the ports I added. And guess what? You're in luck, sir. You have an application running on port 80." That's my web server, so feel free to have it. And oh, so it's coming from port one, two, three from this guy, 10.0.0.5. So I'll keep this information handy because I might send a request to back to him. And we will, right? But I'm not gonna explain it in this video because it's already too long, guys, and you're already yawning and I don't know. So so I'll I'll try to be I'll try to be as uh, I know this is a dry topic and it's kind of boring, so bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Help. All right. We removed my port number and layer. Which layer is this now? Layer five? Layer five. The session layer. Got this. And guess what? This is my session. I know this. It's tagged clearly with this session ID. So it knows that, okay. Oh, oh you're talking about this particular session. Because remember, guys. You can have seven TCP connections to a given web server, right? But each one will have different sessions, okay? And that's how and that's how it's identified because you can have a frame coming to port 80 coming from this server coming it's, it's all identical everything is identical but only the session ID differs and that's how it knows that it's a different connection, okay? And guess what? Passes over I got my data. I, I I just checked that this is the session. So it tells the application. By the way, this is session blah. Seven, session seven. Session triangle. Right. I feel like I'm in kindergarten triangles. I don't know why I was thinking. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So decrypt. This is taking this information and optionally decrypt it. Right. Here's where you get screwed. Uh, you're gonna be screwed, guys. If you're on public Wi-Fi and you didn't encrypt, people can just sniff your data. Just like plain day, man. So get really get a VPN. Even VPN. I mean, VPN encrypts for you, right? But VPN, yeah, you really need to be careful, guys, with this stuff. Okay. So and once you understand this, like really cool to understand what's happening, guys. Right from from a software engineer point of view, and and goes up and decrypts it, and the server says, okay, I just got a request. All this data, someone is requesting get on this. Here's the cookies. Here's the and this is where our Express J not JS application will just ha hit a breakpoint where someone made a get request. After all this journey, after all this story, it's good really to understand how things work, guys. It feels good. It took me it took me a while to kind of kind of decrypt this thing into to into a software engineering point of view if you will and uh, i hope you really enjoyed obviously i if, if you're a network engineer you're probably yelling at me now i have left out a lot of information i probably maybe said something wrong correct me if i if i did in the comment section i'm not perfect but i think this is in a nutshell high level 
overview of a software engineering overview of the OSI model of UL, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I am going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Consider subscribing. Like this video if you like it, and uh, share it with your friends. And I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. You guys stay awesome.